Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever and whenever you may be listening to this broadcast. I'm Mark Holliday. Welcome to your encouraging word for today. You know, again, I enjoy being on the broadcast, speaking with you, sharing with you, talking with you. But today, again, as always, I'm posing a question, but I'm posing a question from something I heard. I believe it was yesterday. And it's the area of finances. It's in the area of prosperity. And you know, that's a taboo word in the church today among secular groups that observe the church, that's listened to the church, because we have some people that gave the, the, uh, with this, the word of faith or prosperity has given the church a bad name. However, that does not negate what we're getting ready to talk about today is what does God has to say about finances? There is a popular question that's asked in the church today. And it goes something like this. Can God make you rich? Now, if you answer that question based off the scripture, yes, God can make you rich. Yes, God can make you prosper. Yes, God can do anything he wants to do. But why would God want to do something like that? Now, many times people have taken that statement and they've taken the scriptures. And let's get something straight. I'm not talking about people that's running shenanigans in the church, just running scams in the church. I'm specifically speaking about what does the Bible has to say about money and God making you rich. That's the question I want to pose to you today. That's the question I want to tackle. Now, seeing that the, the, the society or America is going through what they want to deny, is going through a recession, a possible depression, we have high taxes, we have high gas, foods, crime, everything is off the chart. However, as a believer, here's what I want to encourage you and put something on your mind. Because of these things that are happening, God has always told us that we are to depend on him for everything. This is why Jesus said in Matthew 6, if you seek first the kingdom of God and his way of doing things, all of these things shall be added to you. And if you look further down in that scripture, he said, why would you worry about clothing and houses and food to eat? He said, observe the birds, how they fly through the air and they eat every day and not a single one of their needs go unmet. And he said, if God can take care of the birds, how much will he take care of you? Oh, you of little faith. And that's when he penned the scripture, seek first the kingdom of God and all of these things will be added to you. However, Jesus says something else, and this, lead, this is going to lead me up to my question and answering the question, can God make you rich? It leads me up to a question or a statement Jesus said. He said the pagan people, or unbelievers uh, of the world, they seek after those things. But he was saying, you as a child of God, you shouldn't be seeking those things. He said those things shall be added to you. Now, I know I may be kicking over a lot of sacred cows right now. I might be stirring up some emotions that get people riled. And they're saying things like I've been serving God my entire life and I'm still going without. Or I was a part of a church. They took everything I had. The pastor was driving a nice car and all the people in the congregation, they were going without. But listen. The scripture has been written to every believer. It was not written just to the pastor. It was just not written, written to the prophet, the pastor, uh, the apostle, the evangelist, pastor, and teacher. It was written to every believer. And it's up to us to get the word of God and allow it to fruition in our life and let it begin to explode and bring forth results. That's what our ministry is about, effective living ministry, teaching and preaching the word of God with simplicity and understanding so you can prosper in your everyday life. Now, let's tackle this question. Let's turn over to 2 Corinthians, the ninth chapter. 2 Corinthians, the ninth chapter, Paul is addressing the Corinthian church about the poor uh, saints in Jerusalem. A famine had just hit the city, hit the area, and he was gathering and rallying the believers to get an offering together to send to the impoverished believers in Jerusalem. Now watch this. When Paul is encouraging them to give, he's saying, you're not just giving to give, you're giving and watch God do something for you. Let me take it a second step. Did you not know there's a ministry of giving? Now, a lot of people have built churches around the ministry of prayer. I haven't found that in the scripture. Don't get mad at me, but there's nowhere in the Bible where God told anyone to start a ministry of prayer. A ministry of prayer is something that you should just be doing. You found Anna in the temple praying always. You found certain individual uh, Simeon that committed their life to prayer. Nowhere in the Bible God talked about a ministry of prayer. However, God did talk 
talk about a ministry of giving. A lot of people don't want to join or start that ministry, but watch this. Let's tackle this statement again. Can God make you rich? My question unequivocally, unapologetically, yes. But let's define this word rich. Now, I want to read a scripture, then we're going to go back and unpack the scriptures before to make this scripture stand out. Now, in 2 Corinthians, the ninth chapter, in the 11th verse, it says this. Uh, let's go back to the 10th verse. In 2 Corinthians, the ninth chapter, this is Paul speaking to the Corinthian church. It says, now he that ministered seed to the sower both minister bread for your food and multiply your seed sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness. Verse 11, being enriched. Look at that word underlined in your Bible. It says being enriched in everything to all bountifulness, which causes through us thanksgiving to God. I'm going to read that in another translation later on, probably. But here's what I want to do. I want to unpack this scripture here. God says or Paul says now he talking about God. He's going to give you seed to sow or ministereth seed to the sower. It means money to the giver or seed to the farmer. He said, God is able to give you something to give. And then the second thing he's going to do, he said, he's going to provide bread for you to eat. Now, God's saying, if you commit yourself to give it, I'm first going to do two things. First of all, I'm going to give you something to give. Do you know Ephesians 4 and 30 says, uh, let him bestow still no more, but rather let him work laboring with his hands. So what? So he can have something to give. The scripture never told us to go to work to provide for ourselves because God said he will supply your every need according to your riches and glory. Now you're saying, Brother Mark, are you saying that I'm not supposed to take care of myself on my job? Well, based off what God said, he said he will empower you. He will take care of you. He will provide for you. And there are avenues in which he will use. At times it may be your job, but ultimately God said, I'm taking care of you. So the two things he said, I'm going to provide seed for the sower. Your job primary purpose for the believer is you have something to give to the person that need. Second, he said, I'm going to provide food for you. That's what the scripture mean. And Matthew 6, God said, if you seek first the kingdom of God, now, let me unpack that word kingdom real fast. We talked about this in that last broadcast. You as a child of God, not a child of your church, a child of the kingdom. Do you know all of your resources and provision comes from the unseen realm from the kingdom of God? Now, I see this broadcast it might be a part two. It's going to be lengthy. The Bible calls us ambassadors for Christ. Do you know what an ambassador is? An ambassador is someone that's uh, sit on the behalf of a president or a country to speak on the behalf of that president or that king. You as an ambassador for Christ, 2 Corinthians, the fifth chapter, around the 20th verse, he said that you are an ambassador in the earth sent to speak on the behalf of God. This is why it's so important that the believer live the way they're supposed to live, speak how God told them to speak, which is his word, and reflect the kingdom in which they represent the kingdom of God. Now watch this. In the natural, do you know an ambassador goes to another country? If you were sent from the U.S. to Dubai or Europe or anywhere else as an ambassador of this country, this country provides for you, not the country that you're in. You have an embassy in which you live. They provide for your car, your well-being, your security detail. They provide everything for you. Your main mission is to speak on behalf of the president or the king that sits you. As far as the believer, you are to speak on the behalf of Jesus Christ as an ambassador to him of God, as an ambassador of God. Now, in doing that, God said, I'll take care of you. Let me, let me bring it down to another level. Since you're here on the earth as an ambassador of Christ, God has promised to take care of you because you're a part of the kingdom. Seek first the kingdom of God, their way of doing things, and all of these things shall be added. Now, someone say, I'm going without. Is it a possibility you're not reflecting the kingdom? You're not speaking on the behalf of the kingdom, and the kingdom probably have recalled you and said, I need you to come back and get the right message, and in doing so, I'll, I'll stop. Stop cutting off the provision. I'll provide for you, but you might be at a place to where uh, you need to reconsider what you're doing so a further supply can come. Now, let me get back to 2 Corinthians, the ninth chapter. Now, we 
said, God said, I will give you seed to sow, which means I will give you money to give. I will provide for you. I will provide your own bread. And then he said, I will multiply your seed this song. Lord, I'm trying to take my time on this. He said, when you give toward a, a worthy cause, I'll multiply that seed. It's kind of like if you get one watermelon seed and you plant it, don't you know you're going to get a watermelon back full of seeds? God says, when you give, now let's go back and talk about how are you supposed to give? I'm going to go back and do a recap on this on the next broadcast, but how are you supposed to give? In the sixth chapter of this same chapter, the ninth chapter, the sixth verse in the ninth chapter, look what Paul said. But this I say, he which sows sparingly or gives sparingly shall also reap sparingly. He which soweth bountifully shall also reap bountifully. Now, God says when you give first, I'm looking at the condition and how you're giving. Are you giving begrudgingly or are you giving generously? A sower or a farmer, when they go to plant their crop that year, it can have a barn full of seeds, bags of seed, 100 pound bags full of seed. But they decide they're going to go out with a little cup and just plant a little. How big of a harvest you think that's going to be? Not very big. But if that farmer get a handful of seeds and begin to vigorously and generously begin to plant those seeds, guess how his crop and harvest is going to be? It's going to be bountiful. Now, let me just uh, dispel some thoughts right now. I, I, am I saying to you to give all your money away to a church or whatever it may be? No, I'm not saying that. The next point or the next scripture I'm going to read is going to address that. In verse 7, it says, every man according as he has purpose in his heart. So let him give not grudgingly or of necessity for God loves a cheerful giver. What does that mean? Every man should purpose in his heart what to give. Now, this will lead me into a whole nother lesson on tithing, which a lot of churches get mad when I touch on this. But watch this. What did God say? God said every man should give according as he intended or purpose in his heart because God knows what your financial condition may be. He knows the financial situation that you're in. And he said, whatever you purpose in your heart to give, that's how I'm going to bless it. He said, don't let anyone pressure you into giving. I tell this story now often and I often share it with you. I was at a church many years ago and there was a nationally known, a world renowned evangelist there. And she was up preaching and the whole church was proverbially on fire. They had the organ going, had the music going, the drums going. You know how our African-American churches are sometimes. And she said, if you be a man or woman of God, run five dollars down to the altar and lay it on there right now. Well, the church, probably a thousand people were there. And boy, the people took off and ran and ran the five dollars down and came back. And I just stood there. And a lot of my friends came back. They said, Mark, how come you didn't run down there and put a five dollars on the altar? I said, I'm a man of God. Will I put five dollars on the altar or not? So I'm not going to be pressured into giving. See, they were pressured into giving. Then some of them came back reluctantly. You know, for some people, that's all they had in their pocket. And they was reluctant to give it, but they didn't want to be under the spirit of condemnation. How many people have been condemned into giving more than they should biweekly because they was told they were going to be cursed? How many people continue to give because they want to remain on their favorite board? I'm not going to go too far into that, but do you see what the scripture is saying? Every man should give according to how they have purposed in his heart. Don't give under pressure. Don't give reluctantly for God loves a cheerful giver. What about the scripture? The spirit of God just brought this to me. You remember the story? I believe it's around the 10th chapter of Mark when Jesus was sitting in the temple. I'll put it on the screen. And he was watching how everyone was given. And he noticed how the rich people came in. And the scripture says they gave so much out of their abundance. And then there was one widow woman that came and she gave less than what was it? Two mites gave a penny. And Jesus was like, oh, my God. He called everybody over and he said, look. Look what this woman gave. Why was Jesus so excited about the two mites but said nothing about the abundance, the hundreds or thousands or tens of thousands of dollars the rich people put in the offering? 
where Jesus said, these men gave out of their wealth. In other words, they didn't miss it. They, as my first pastor used to say, give till it hurt a little bit. Give till it trigger your faith. He said, this woman gave all that she had. That's what the sacrifice was. No, he, I'm not saying give all that you have. But when you give in a sacrificial manner, it moves the hand of God. And then what happened was now this woman can ask what she need from God and God will begin to give it to her because it was a sacrificial gift. Many times, God, watch this, 1 Corinthians, I believe it's Romans, the 16th chapter, I'll put it on the screen. It says everyone should lay aside how God has prospered them. So Paul said, when I come, there will be no gathering. God said, you are to give how I prospered you. Some of you all have businesses and I'm still answering the question, can God make you rich? So hold on. I'm just covering all of these nuances. Some of you all in a type of business where this week you might've made $5,000 and you would be able to give a certain amount this week, but this week, the next week it was slow. You probably made a thousand dollars. Can you give this week what you gave last week? No. No, you cannot. So Paul said, every man should give according how they have been prospered. Well, somebody said, just give 10% of each one of those amounts. Do you know what? Giving 10% of $5,000 given is differently than the other. Why? It's just because you were lacking that week. My, my, my point is this, just do what the scripture says and then watch how God will bless you. Now look what it says in verse seven. Every man, we read this, every man according as he has purposed in his heart, let him give not grudgingly or of necessity, meaning under pressure, for God loves a cheerful giver. Look at verse 8. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you. That word grace means favor. God is able to make all favor abound towards you. Do you know when favor began to abound towards you, it will supersede and take you into uh, uh, the supernatural? In other words, you're looking to pay your car note and, and, and mortgage this week, or your gas, your light, your phone bill, your cell phone bill, taxes. Then all of a sudden you get a phone call from somebody saying, hey, you know, I'm a member at your church or I saw you at work and I just been impressed to pay your mortgage up for six months. That's what happens when the favor of God began to rest on the giver of God. That's what happens when God is able, not man. God is able to make all grace abound towards you. When God favors you in the sight of an individual who has financial means, oh my God, he can propel you to another ramp. If someone paid your house note up, your car note up, if it was just your cell phone or grocery bill for six months, do you know the money you have access to? Then you can pay off some frivolous debt, then get yourself in a financial and a financial a position where you can be more of a giver for God, which still I'm going to answer that question. Can God make you rich? Because there's a reason why God will make you rich. And let me preface this right now. God did not say in scripture, he'll make you rich. He said he will enrich you. And I'm going to define what that means, but let's continue to read. And verse eight, as we said, God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that you always having all sufficiency in all things. You will have all sufficiency in all things that you may abound in every good work. In other words, God said, no matter what you put your hands to, I'm going to favor you. No matter what financial situation you find yourself in, I'm going to favor you. I'm going to make sure you have enough to do what you need to do. Then watch this. You got enough uh, to do what you need to do, but it goes on further because God's saying, I'm going to take you beyond that if you can pass the giving test. Many believers cannot pass the giving test. What's the giving test? Well, the giving test will determine if God is going to enrich you or as we say, make one rich. That word enrich means to make one better off than where they are right now. Wouldn't you like to be first better off than where you are now? Instead of paycheck to paycheck, wouldn't you want eight paychecks put aside? You may not be wealthy rich, but you sure in a financial situation that you wasn't in last week, you were paycheck, paycheck to paycheck now, now you're eight paychecks ahead. You may be on government assistance right now, but all of a sudden now God is a blessed, God has blessed someone to bless you. Then now you got some disposable income, your $10,000 in the bank put aside outside of your government assistant check. 
You, you see how it happened when God begins to favor you, but you must position yourself to, to be a giver for God, which I'm getting ready to cover, which is the asset test and for God to enrich you. Now in verse nine, it says, and it is written, he have dispersed abroad. He have given to the poor. His righteousness remains forever. Verse 10. Now he, God, that ministers seed or gives seed to the sower or to the giver with both minister bread for your food. I will multiply your seed sown and I will increase the fruits of your righteousness. What does all that mean? God is simply saying this, and I want you to go back and read this in the New Living Translation. God is saying, when I increase your giving capacity or you increase your giving capacity, I'll multiply your resources. I'll multiply your bank accounts. I will multiply what you have, but it's not so you can have a bunch of money sitting in the bank. It's not so you can just eat out every day and, and wear a nice clothes to church or wherever you go and drive in a nice car and go around subconsciously saying, hey, everybody, look at me. Look how good I look. No, God said, I'm going to do those things. And while doing that, I'm going to increase the fruits of your righteousness. In other words, I'm going to create a spirit of generosity in you. So when he gives you money, when he enriches you his way, it's not so you can just brag about I got a new pair of shoes on for the third time this week is so you can help those in need. Just like God favored or tapped someone to help you, he's going to increase your resources so you can go help someone. That's the asset test. That's the reason why God will make someone rich is so you can enrich someone else. You can be the conduit in which God is going to flow the kingdom resources through so you can help others. Now look what it says in verse 11. Here's what I was getting to. It says, being enriched. Look that word enrich up. You know, my mom used that word a lot when I was growing up. She was cooking. She would be sitting there and she would make her cake and she would get her finger and lick and, and, and wipe the side of the bowl and taste it. She said, no, I need to make that a little bit more rich. And in other words, make it better than what it is now. Make it more valuable. When God enrich you, he says, specifically speaking of your resources, I'm going to make you more valuable than what you are now financially. I'm going to increase your storehouse. I'm, I'm going to do some things with you, but I'm doing it so you can be a blessing to others. But meanwhile, since you have all these resources from God, God is saying now you can go get a little bit more for yourself. But don't invite the speed of avarice or greed into your life. So to answer my question, to answer the question, can God make you rich or enrich you? Yes, he can based off these scriptures. But he's enriching you so you can be generous to others. And that's what this whole chapter is about. There was poor believers in Jerusalem. A famine had hit, excuse me, a famine had hit the town, the city, the area. And so God, I mean, Pete Paul on his mission field, he commissioned the Corinthian church who were in Corinth. Since you all have money, I want you to give to the poor saints in Jerusalem. And if you give and when you give in the right attitude, the right spirit, not under pressure, not under the speed of reluctancy, God is going to begin to multiply your wealth even more. And then I'm going to create a spirit of generosity in you. Now you have this ministry of giving. And that's all. And then I'm going to cover that in the next broadcast. There is a ministry of giving. This is how we beat what's going on in our country right now. This is why I thank God I can still go to the pumps and I can fill up and I and I have trucks. I have SUVs. And when you fill them up, man, that 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 bill or that those digits go way past the, the two dollar. I mean, the two digit mark, it goes into the three dollar mark, but I can fill it up. And if you commit yourself to giving not just to your local church, you could be in a restaurant. You look across and you can pay for somebody's meal. I'll end it with this. I was in the drive through uh, a couple of weeks ago and I saw a police officer ahead of me. So the police officer put his order in and I pulled up and I asked the guy on the intercom. I said, hey, I want to pay for the car ahead of me. The police officer, the guy at the other end of the intercom said, well, what do you want to do that for? I said, it doesn't matter. I want to pay for his food. And so he said, uh, OK, so 
The police officer pulled up to the window to pay for his food, and I can see the conversation going back and forth, and I'm just chuckling because right now the spirit of giving is on. You see, you don't have to give thousands away to be a giver. It's just the simple everyday things. And what happened was uh, once the officer got his food, his arm came out the window, and he was doing this out the window like, thank you, thank you, thank you. See, just because one have a job doesn't mean they're not going through some financial struggle. And this is what we have to learn how to do when God begins to bless you. You have to learn how to be a giver at every level and be ready to give in any season. Let me give you one more testimony. My wife and I were sitting in the restaurant and the, and, uh, and the uh, hostess came over and, and, you know, my wife looked at him and said, honey, let's give. Well, I said, okay. So we ordered just a salad. We sat there and ate and the, the salad came back. It was about, I don't know, 18, 19, $20. And I said, okay, what you want to give? And she said, let's give them $50. So I said, $50, baby. The meal wasn't but $20. And I said, but we said we're going to give. <laughs> and we agreed to give this person that amount. So after we paid for our food, we handed him the card. And then we gave him, my wife gave him a $50 bill. And he stood there kind of confused. Okay, debit card, what, what's this for? We said that the debit card is to pay for our food. The $50 is your tip immediately he started crying. You know, the first thing he said, thank God. The scripture says, when you give on the behalf of God, and I'm going to read it, it says for the, in verse 12, the ninth chapter, for the administration of this service, not only supply of the want of the saints, but it is abundant also and many thanksgivings to God. When you give on the behalf of God, they praise God, on behalf of what you just did. Now, God said, give them more money to give because they just passed the test. After he, after we witnessed the gospel to him, that opened us up to share the gospel with him. We wrote, we, we went home and we both got out of the car. We parked in front of the house that day and we got out and I said, oh, I forgot to get something out of the car. I went back to the car and looked down and there was a hundred dollar bill laying in the middle of the street. Now, do you see how God can just make things happen? We gave him 50 and got an additional 50 back. Well, my wife said, well, that will be mine. And she took that in and we went on about our day. But here's what I'm saying. When you make it and purpose in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under pressure, God loves a cheerful giver. God is able to make all grace abound towards you. You will always have all sufficiency in all things. You will abound in every good work. And so to end this broadcast, and we'll continue on next, yes, God can enrich you, make you richer than what you are, but it's for the purpose and plans of the kingdom of God, not for selfish gain. So, hey, let's start doing what God says to supersede what's going on in our economy and this country and watch God start allowing you to live out of his kingdom and not the kingdom of this earth. Hey, I'm Mark Holiday. That's your encouraging word for today.